Thanks for tuning in to Witch Wednesdays with Steph and Tara, where we share our knowledge as we chat about a new witchcraft topic every Wednesday morning. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. This is Steph. And this is Tara. And you are listening to episode 67, Things We Wish We Knew When Starting Witchcraft. Oh my gosh, guys, so many things. This is sort of an amalgamation of different questions that we've gotten asked repeatedly. But one of the things that's definitely what we wish we knew when we started. And along with that, we are also going to discuss a lot of other things that come up with generally beginner witchcraft, which is just how do you find community? Uh, and if we were to go back and do it over again, like if we would change anything, if there's anything specific like about our past that um, we would do differently, knowing what we know now to sort of share that information with you today. So hopefully this answers a, a lot of the most common questions. But of course, if you have any more after listening to this, then, you know, check us out all the places that are linked at whichwednesdays.com. <laughs> Perfect. So the very first thing, sort of the wish we knew, is where to find information, just in general. In general. There is so much information, which you obviously know because you have been now listening to this podcast for almost a year and a half. <laughs> like, there's yes, new information so exciting. every week. So there is a ton of information on witchcraft out there. And especially once you start getting into those specific pagan paths that we talked about last week, like there, you can just get so overwhelmed so easily. So So much information out there. Absolutely understand as a beginner, uh, the question of where, where do you find information when you're starting? And the answer to that is a little bit different now than when Tara and I started. Oh yeah. (laughs) But just because the the internet you get the internet yes <laughs> the growing <laughs> the growing of the internet um so i know that most people find their information some sort of online platform now like obviously you're listening to this podcast but there's also youtube videos and online forums and all kinds of things like that in addition to the standard books at the library which is what, <laughs> where tara and i got our mm-hmm. you know, initial information so you might be able to be finding the information easily, but you might be a little overwhelmed and specifically having a difficult time trying to pick out which information is right for you. I'm nodding so emphatically right now. I know you can't see it, but yes. (laughs) (laughs) It can be incredibly difficult because based on which sort of path and tradition you want to follow, information can change. Yeah. Yeah. Because a certain paths and, it, you know, more like religious aspects of it have different associations and different meanings. And it can just change a lot of the ways that you would work within your witchcraft. So that's why we talked about uh, pagan paths and we talked about the Wiccan deities and things like that mm-hmm. to sort of give you some ideas of where you could possibly go and ways that you can study. Because that's probably going to be the easiest way to pick the information that's right for you. Yeah. And I think just reading and listening to things like we have offered so many book recommendations and we have more to come. But once you start like reading those things and listening, you know, to podcasts or YouTube videos or anything like that, that you are going to feel what's right for you and what's not. Um, You will definitely come across some YouTubers that you're like, I don't no. feel anything that you're saying right now it just doesn't seem like it's applicable applicable to me and that's perfectly fine you are not going to agree with every recommendation that we give you you are not going to agree with every video that you find out there because it, it at the end of the day it has to be personal for you mm-hmm. so very much so when you are picking what's right for you just go with your gut instinct and just try to source a lot of different information don't just stick to one book because there is no one book on witchcraft that's the main uh tenant is yeah. that there is no i mean it's not, not even one from, true way yeah there and not even from gerald gardner in wicca there is no one book there's mm-hmm. no <laughs> in witchcraft in wicca in anything there is no one singular text like there is the bible for christianity we don't have that no so there not is no 
singular text that tells you exactly what you should believe and how you should practice. So you need to source your information from a lot of different places because you may pick up a book that has a ton of information, but if you stick only to that text, you're missing out, first of all, on a lot of great other paths that are out there that something could spark for you. Mm -hmm. But there may be something incorrect in that book and you wouldn't know it if you don't read a lot of things. (laughs) Well, and no one's the ultimate expert on everything. Um, I'm pretty sure every book recommendation we've ever made has also referenced other books. So if you're really feeling a book, like you're, this is the information that speaks to me, I guarantee, I I guess I shouldn't guarantee, but I can almost guarantee that they're going to recommend other readings. They're going to recommend other sources to look at. There's, there's not no one's the the expert no one is knows all the things about witchcraft ever known there's just too much information out there so when you first get started especially but finding information if you find a book that speaks to you that's awesome i've been there it's great they're going to be recommendations there's going to be sources on that book check them out just see what else other information is out there Uh, No one stands alone in witchcraft, which is why it's so great. Which ties into the second point of things we wish we knew when we started is that there is more than one way to do things. Oh, yeah. So even across these different books, even if they reference each other and generally agree on a lot of things, there are going to be things that are different because there is no one way to do things. There is no one way to you know, create a money bowl spell. There is no one way to create a protection chassis. There's tons of different ways to do things. So having all of those different books and references is great. And, you know, when you are starting out, you might focus only on one thing and that can I work really well for you. If you say you find a, you know, protection bowl and you really love that one and it really works, then that's great. Keep using that's it. Amazing. But a lot of witches find that that doesn't work for them and then give up on the idea altogether. And that's not what you want to do. Keep looking for more information. Just remember that there's more than one way to do things. However, caveat to that <laughs> is to pay attention to generally agreed upon correspondences. Yeah. We have talked about so many correspondences like, the colors that we talked about in the candle magic episode, there are um, a lot of correspondences for the different crystals and things like that. And there are some generally agreed upon correspondences across the board. Yeah. And if you are reading a text or listening to a video that tells you something the complete opposite, you really want to make note of that. So that's why like the more you read and the more you learn, you see the same things coming up again and again, like the color blue being associated with health, like that is generally accepted principle, the same way that white is, you know, purification and things like that. Generally accepted. Yes. Colors and principles. And it might not always work that well for you in your witchcraft. Like um, we talked about Tara loves roses Mm -hmm. and hates the color pink, Yep, but I am the exact opposite where I don't use roses in my witchcraft and I love the color pink. (laughs) So those things are like personal to us, Yeah, but we understand now (laughs) that there are generally agreed upon principles. So you do have to start somewhere and like learn all of those things. But again, if you stick to one text and it's telling you something the complete opposite, you're never going to know that that's, that might be wrong and not, you know, the best way for your path. So a general general agreement on correspondences. Make sure you pay attention to that. Uh, with that, yes, you're learning, and don't ever forget you're learning a lot. So try not to overwhelm yourself. I'm not saying if you find a book that you love and you see that there's a list of references and you go get all 50 of those books and you're going to read them in order, that's unhealthy. I mean, you can love this topic. Uh, I do, Steph does, but maybe get one or two extra books at a time. Don't, don't be afraid to take your time. This is a lifetime of study. There's so much to learn at first. I know that a lot of people want to dive all the way in and learn everything all at once. There's just too much information for that. Um, Don't be afraid to take your time. Yep. And just focus on one thing at a time because they definitely do build on each other and one thing feeds into the next. Yeah. So you'll get there eventually. Lifelong journey. 
one it's thing a at a time. Life journey. And if you've been listening to us this whole time, you know, like we started very, very general. There's so much information. We have so many episodes still to do. And we aren't going back and redoing the old episodes. Like there's always more information out there. Um, Don't be afraid to start overarching and narrow down, but don't feel like you need to know the details of every single section right away. Like there's just too much. (laughs) You get overwhelmed and burnt out. And the next thing we wish we knew when we started witchcraft is that your practice will evolve. So write stuff down. Oh, heck yeah, guys. This is huge. This is probably something that I would change. When I first started, I wrote in like notes in the margin of the books I was reading. My practice is so different now that until I started my own book of shadows, like I don't reference some of those books anymore. I'm not saying that I've given them all away or anything, but they're not as easily accessible to me because I don't think to check some of the old books that are more general knowledge. Whereas my book of shadows has all everything in it. Yeah. If you don't write things down, you don't have that to sort of look back on and see what was working and not working then and make any sort of ties to your emotional state at the time, what was going on in your life. You're just not going to have that foundational knowledge if you don't write it down because you're not going to remember. Nobody remembers. Nobody remembers what their witchcraft practice was like, every detail of it from five years ago. It's just not, our brains do not work like that. I would just say, if you can't remember what you were wearing a year ago today, you're not going to remember exactly how your practice was a year ago today, (laughs) like, let alone five, 10 years down the road. It's just, yeah. Yeah. You might remember, you know, what sort of path that you were on there very generally, but all the little details and ins and outs of, you know, the kind of spell work you were doing and how you were feeling and how things were manifesting or not, you're not going to know unless you write that down. And that's such great information to have. Well, and and I agree with Tara that that's one of the things that if I would change and do differently would be to keep better records. Yeah. Well, and when you're first starting, there's so much information that you might not be aware of. Like you do a spell one day and it works beautifully. You do the cell, a spell second time. It works beautifully. The third time it doesn't work. You can go back and check what changed. Maybe you did it the same time of day, but it was a different moon phase. Maybe you substituted in a crystal. Maybe you, you just, without having that written down somewhere, you're never going to remember all these little details. And sometimes it's the details you don't think to check. Like when I first started, I was like full moon or nothing. I would write when I did stuff on the full moon and I never wrote another moon phase down. And as I developed my practice, I realized, oh, I should have written that down. And as long as I have a date, I can go back and check those records. But at the time it wasn't important. It wasn't something that was on my radar. So I wouldn't focus on that unless it was a full moon. So going back now, I can see, oh, that's why that didn't work. (laughs) The next thing we wish we knew when starting, when we've already talked about this in many other episodes, is don't buy all the things. Guys, you don't need to buy We are both guilty of this. Oh, so (laughs) guilty. Um, Across the board, don't buy all the things because especially as a beginner, it is so much fun. I mean, we still struggle with this. We Oh, I have so many things I don't need. Tara visits in Chicago. We go to the occult shop and we are still walking out with stuff that we don't need. Uh, she had to like hardcore press me guys be like do you need that jewelry and I'm like well I already have it and she's like why are you looking at it (laughs) it's pretty and I want it it's very tempting and I mean if you want to collect crystals and have certain things then that's great but let your practice grow a little bit because at the beginning it can be very enticing to buy tarot decks and oracle cards and crystals and pendulums and pendulum boards and incense burners and incense and candles and it just goes on and on and I completely understand it but once your practice develops a little more you are not going to need all of those things like you think that you will well there's once your practice starts developing and you find your path so I used to have tarot cards I don't read tarot cards they don't like me I had three decks. (laughs) (laughs) I thought they were cool. They, they were pretty. I spent money on them. I wasn't giving them away, but I, I just, that's not where my path has taken me. I finally got rid of the last set, 
And I feel so much better because it's not just taking up space, but I also felt guilty because I wasn't utilizing them. But yeah, if they you, hated me. if you struggle with that, we definitely understand, but don't you, we talked about that in like the tools episodes that you don't need anything to be a witch, you just yourself. Yeah. So don't feel that like you're starting and you need a wand and a broom and a cloak and it's just it gets to be way too much and you can spend thousands and thousands of dollars on this stuff that you will find that you never use so don't buy all the things uh having kind of corresponding to that there are so many beginner witch kits out there guys i'm not saying we'll never offer one but i find those highly suspect because no one's path is the same and because no one's path the same not everyone needs the same beginner toolkit <laughs> Yeah, and they're great when they have like a small sampling of herbs and crystals and small candles because those are generally useful things across many different yes. types of witchcraft. But when they start including the very specific tools, like n- I don't have an aphime, no use for it in my practice. It's just that why would I get a witch kit that includes it? It's just, it wouldn't work. Well, and I so, have one and it's great. And I, went and I found it. It's handcrafted. It's perfect for me. It doesn't fit into uh, any kind of traditional affame category like of any of the major paths, but it's perfect for me. <laughs> so it wouldn't have been in any of the kits. Exactly. So think, think before you buy things. Yes, that is an excellent. Um, I will also say going back to the knowledge thing, like if you're really interested in 10 things, and say you're getting books from the library and only two of the books are in, get those two books and see if there's a reason those are the only ones that are available. Sometimes, yes, they're the only ones available because they're not very good. But a lot of times it's because that's where the universe wants you to go now. So if you find something that is calls to you, for sure get it. Not saying don't get it. I love things. Obviously, I've got an issue. But um, if it's the right for you, it's right for you. My affirmation I've had since almost the very beginning of my practice back in high school. Other things have come and gone in my practice. That affirmation has stayed with me. And so that was the right purchase for me, even though I was just getting started. And it's kind of like anything else that if you keep, you know, working on your witchcraft and doing your spells and something comes up over and over again that you could think I could really use that, then that's a good time to buy it. The same way as you know, it works with the clothes in your closet. If you keep thinking, I could really use a trench coat or a pair of nude heels, then eventually you're just going to buy them because you know that you would use them. Same thing in witchcraft. If you keep thinking a wand would be really great in this instance, then obviously go out and buy it. We're not saying never buy any tools. We have loads of tools, just intentional purchases. So you don't have any regrets. That's an excellent way of saying it. Yeah. Intentional. The next thing we wish we knew when starting witchcraft to varying degrees because Tara did start out with other people around but it can be lonely so knowing how to find community Mm -hmm. because witchcraft is unlike other religions right because Catholics go to church on Sunday and uh, there are Jewish synagogues all these other religions have groups built in and yeah. places to meet regularly on holidays mm-hmm. high holidays and every Sunday and things like that so witches don't have that yeah even if you do follow a religious path like Wicca even Wicca Wiccans don't have that no so it can be very lonely at the beginning especially if you are coming from an Abrahamic religious background yeah then oh gosh. suddenly losing that sense of community can be very lonely and feel very isolating so absolutely should know how to find community find and people. that can be uh tricky but not impossible because of all of the online resources and a lot of people think that covens are the only option you can be like solitary or in a mm-hmm. coven and there's really no in between and that's not there's really so in betweens guys yeah that's not really accurate there's a lot of in betweens covens are a little harder to find but not impossible we've talked about that before the best place to because covens don't really post online that's Mm -hmm. kind of the thing is that they they do meet in person and it's more private what they do so it's kind of harder to find one to do a google search and be like where's my local coven and how do i join 
<laughs> yeah, they it's don't not... advertise that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really work. So the best way to find a coven and community in general in person is to visit your local occult store. Oh yeah, guys, because they do have the knowledge. Yeah, they the people who work there have all the knowledge, but they do also host gatherings there, and they all have community bulletin boards, like old mm-hmm. school, where you stick a thumbtack in a piece of paper and stick it to a board. Old school. <laughs> and the um, I Kevin's call that will... traditional stuff. <laughs> <laughs> traditional. Uh, so Kevin's will sometimes advertise that way if they are looking for new members, and just generally remember that. Uh, it works both ways. The coven needs to accept you, but you also need to accept the coven and make sure that they're a good fit for you and your energy and your practice. But definitely use occult stores if you are wanting to find something in person. And um, just throwing in there before you get too far into that. Um, so because it's such an individual path, if you want to be in a coven, that's great. If the coven doesn't feel right, don't force yourself to change your path to fit the coven. Okay, just don't. <laughs> Another option here in the U.S., if you are looking for in person, uh, would be to use Meetup.com. They actually have a lot of pagan meetups. It's obviously more common in big cities, but they have a lot of different options. Generally, they do meet at occult stores or a nearby bar. Less so now because it's still in you know COVID. sketchy pandemic times. Um, some things are opening up not really sitting around in a bar talking about witchcraft but um there are outdoor events and things that are happening so meetup.com is a good place and also witches fest usa wanted to throw that one out there because that's in july in case you were wondering it's in new york city but everything is live streamed so if you want to if you're in the new york area they are having it in person this year are they i didn't realize that that's all it says on their website so if you want to check it out it's W I T C H S F E S T USA.com. And we will obviously link that everywhere so you can see it. But you can, yeah, buy tickets. They are doing it in person, but they're going to live stream the whole thing. So, great way to learn from others, meet people in the community, all kinds of things like that. So, if you're in the New York area or want to go there, which is best, has been going on for years. So, people really love that. And they do have that in other countries like there's definitely one in the uk there's definitely like, one in ireland guys which is which is fest.com or dot org maybe some, something like that we'll try to link it for other countries but which is best in, in general is in other countries it's not just an american thing but uh that that's a fun one if you're looking and then online community is obviously super important in this day and age yeah oh and gosh, we won't go too much into it because we've been talking about online community obviously you're listening to this you might follow us on instagram we've talked about our discord server youtube uh, there's huge Patreon. yeah there's a huge community on the discord server that you can join and chat with other witches and i know um on there already a lot of people that will post where they're from and those that are uh, in Near. closer area to each other um can message each other privately so that's a good way to Um, Find people that are in your area that can talk, you know, herb stores and occult stores and what's kind of in your area and then possibly meet up if you, you know, feel comfortable with that. But that's a good way to find people that are in your area. Start with the online, get to know people, obviously be safe. I was going to say, please be safe, guys. (laughs) Don't tell, don't meet strangers at your house. Meet in a public location and (laughs) all of those things that we're supposed to tell you. I avoid predators on the internet. Yeah, don't don't get sucked into predators and don't die. That'd be amazing. So I just want to throw that up there. When we are not the only ones with a Discord server, there are other uh, content creator, podcasters, and YouTubers who also have Discord servers. I'm pretty sure um, Olivia, the Witch of Wanderlust, we've talked about her before. I'm pretty sure she has one. Um, I know that Scarlet Ravenswood has one that's associated with her Patreon account. So there yeah. are a lot of witchy Discord servers that you can join. And um, if, if it's associated with Patreon, there might be a charge, but a lot of people have like free ones. There is no um, charge to join Discord. So free one. And another popular one, I don't personally use it, but I know a lot of people who do is Amino. Uh, and the, there's like the Witches Amino and Pagan Amino. And I will 
link the two that are most popular, but it's aminoapps.com and it's an app for your phone and it's similar to Discord of like chatting and things like that. So yeah, which is Amino is very popular. Nice. So if you have any questions about finding community, definitely let us know because that was a struggle at the beginning. And I know it's a struggle for a lot of people right now. I just- in pandemic life in general. Yeah, I was going to say, it's um, hard to just go out and meet people. <laughs> yeah, right now. But uh, for witches, it was harder before that, too. Just finding like-minded individuals can be tough. I mean, it's becoming much more like widely accepted and a lot more witches out there. But it still can be tricky. Um, just because I'm more old school and less online-y, um, there are one thing that I found is if you have a local community college and they do classes, look for classes on meditation, making jewelry, um, things that can also be magical, uh, can be part of your magical practice. I found my first Wiccan friend outside of my like immediate friend group in a class making handmade jewelry. She taught me how to bless stones before I set them. And it was just, we were chatting and this and that, but if you're looking for more skills, uh, a local community college is going to have classes probably that will assist you. And so that's actually how I started because there was no witchcraft stores or occult stores in my area or anywhere within 150 miles. So I just started looking into classes just at the local community college on, again, pandemic pre-pandemic times and also 20 some years ago. But just because I wanted that skill set, I took a growing herbs class and met a really great green witch. I took, and so there are ways to meet people outside of the online community, but the online community are definitely more focused. So not everyone in an herb growing class locally is going to be a witch. <laughs> Hate to break it to you. We're popular. We're not that popular yet. Yuck. Yes. We're, we're doing that. Going along with meeting people, something that we wish we knew when we started is the idea of meeting the right people. And just generally this idea of there's a level of elitism in witchcraft that really annoys me. So maybe this isn't so much what we wish we knew when we started, but a mini rant. So here's my mini rant. I hate elitist witches. (laughs) (laughs) It really... And I think we've talked about this in various forms on this podcast before, but elitism in witchcraft like really bothers me when somebody thinks that they are better than you or know more than you because they read certain books or practice in a certain way or have been doing it longer or any of those things that it just bothers me because there are so many different paths and so many different ways to learn. Yes. Everybody is at different skill levels. And I know some people who have been practicing for three months and have done their, you know, first spell perfectly and are ready to call themselves a witch. And I know some people who have been doing witchcraft and spell work for 10 years and still aren't comfortable calling themselves a witch because they feel like they're not ready for the title. And either way is fine. Nobody is better than anybody else because you may be an expert in one area, but there is nobody, nobody who is an expert in every single area of witchcraft. I would definitely agree with that. It's not possible because there's too much. There's, there's too much. And a lot of, um, religions are closed. So you don't even know all of the things that happen within the voodoo religion or things like that. Like you don't don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So there is nobody who is an expert in anything. So beware and just stay away from elitist witches who, I mean, there are obviously, people like us who run podcasts and just teach you what we know. And that is open for interpretation. You can disagree with us or get on discord and tell different ways that you do something because we obviously don't know everything. We tell you that all the time. Mm -hmm. So learning from people is fine. There are going to be witches who are more advanced than you in their practice just because they've been doing it longer and read a few more books. That doesn't mean they're better than you. Well, we are not better than you. No one's better than anyone else, but also everyone's path is so individualized. Like I cannot read tarot cards. You are awesome at reading tarot cards and Oracle cards. I do not have that skill set. If it comes down to magical cooking, I think that I'm pretty good at that. Like I I grow magical plants and I do magical 
cooking things. Like that's my skill set. Um, but tarot cards, heck no. Like, like I said, they hate me. Like you can read my cards. I can't read anyone's cards, including my own. Like they attack me somehow. So it's not necessarily a matter of who knows more. It's personal strengths. So I also have a problem with labels in general. Um, I call myself a solo witch, but I practice with others. I practice, I've done spells with other people. I've done coven celebrations. Like it labels me nothing. They really are meaningless. Like if you want to say you're a witch, power to you. If you want to say you're not a witch and you do spellcraft, power to you. Like it doesn't matter. We all have the power. And that is my second rant that goes around along with that is that along with elitism labels related to that mean nothing you can be a high priestess in whatever coven that means literally nothing to anybody outside of your coven yeah so high priestess of the silver moon lake coven it means nothing you do not have any outside of your coven you do not have any like specialized training or information or anything that makes you above anyone else and I know a lot of beginner witches see those titles like high priest and priestess and think that those are like the most advanced wishes witches and they have to you know memorize everything they they say no no those it's not like going for a doctorate those titles don't mean anything they are yeah placed upon they they do mean something within that coven structure but outside of that anybody can adopt that label so don't be fooled well and I had a friend and nice, nice girl. Um, and she wanted to be a high priestess. There's nothing wrong with that goal. She uh, worked really hard. She studied really hard. She was with a coven. She became a high priestess at 18. I'm sorry. She, smart girl, very nice girl, very devoted to that coven. I have no issues with that. But she worked so hard to become high priestess. And then she stopped doing anything with them because she didn't know where to go because she'd spent so much energy focused on that title that she hadn't developed her practice. Which is crazy because your practice, it's a lifelong journey. You're going to be doing this in growing, involving and changing your entire life. So if you just work for towards this one title and then quit, that doesn't make any sense. Well, and she worked really hard for it because it takes over a year and a day just to get in the cup. Anyway, so I was built really bad because she's like, but I, I did it. And I was like, that's great. And, and she's like, I did it. That, that was it. That was, she hadn't managed to develop her practice because she was so focused on the title. And then it took her five years to find her path after that, like going back and not necessarily relearning, but focusing on things that she wanted to learn and what made sense to her versus what was needed to get this title of high priestess. So I agree, like witchcraft, I encourage everyone, if a title is important to you, go for it. I have no problems. I like titles. I wouldn't have gotten my JD if I didn't want to be Esquire. Like that's, it is what it is. But I just think that it, it has to mean more than that. Like you have to be in it for the practice, not the title. Titles are fun. Don't get me wrong. I like it. I like titles. I think they're cool, but that can't be the end all be all of your practice. <laughs> and they're not something to lord over other witches, especially beginners. They should not be. No. Yeah, I don't think you should lord anything over anyone else, but that's a personal opinion that I think everyone should adopt. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Yes. So that is our, that's our mini rant on elitist. <laughs> and be really... They have a lot to say about that. Yeah, I was going to say, just be really leery on anyone who's like, I am... You probably remember we went over types of witches really early on, and I took a Huffington Post quiz to tell me what kind of witch I was. Just yeah, as we, a fun we, thing. Like, I had never heard of that. We said that in that episode. Yeah. And I was like, I had never heard of that type of witch. It made no sense. Didn't care. It was a fun thing to do. That's how much titles mean. <laughs> Take a quiz. Exactly. So this has already been way longer than we had planned for. So the last sort of thing that we are going to talk about is specifically anything that either of us would do differently in our practice if we were you know starting over like kind of knowing what we know anything that we would change so I've got got just a couple of things do you have anything Tara I have a couple of things um so one thing is and we kind of touched on it earlier um 
I found a book that I really, really liked. I took notes in it. And then I read everything by the same author. And I didn't branch out for probably six months. And some things that she said resonated hard with me. Some things not as much. And I really wish that I had taken the time to go and she even referenced in her books, oh, I got this information from here or for more details, go here. But I was so in love with this one author that I just read all of her books and nothing else for probably six months. And I wish I had branched out sooner because obviously I've had time now to go and branch out since then. But at the time I was so focused on her ideas, what was right. I wasn't developing my own path. I was just following her lead blindly, if that makes sense. Um, so don't be afraid to branch out early, but do it consciously and intentionally. Don't, if I had gotten every book that she referenced in her book, I would have definitely not followed witchcraft because I would have been completely overwhelmed and done. Um, another thing is when I first started practicing, I had a close group of friends that pra was practicing with me and I let their opinions on how witchcraft should be influence me, um, a lot. And that's not. I'm not saying you can't be influenced by outside forces or you shouldn't be influenced by outside forces, but their path wasn't my path. They were very much a coven that wanted to be a coven together. And that just wasn't the path that spoke to me. But again, I spent probably more than six months. Um, part of it, I was just young enough that it's hard to say no to your friends when you're a 13 year old girl. It just is. But uh, I wish that I had studied more what I wanted to study early on. I think I would have found my path a lot sooner. It took me quite a few years and past change over time. Anyway, I'm definitely not where I was 10 years ago or even 20 years ago. But when I first started, I almost wish that I had had a more solid base rather than following this one path and then having to retrench and figure out, Oh, I can do things differently. So I think that is my biggest advice is, no matter how much you like one specific point of view, don't be afraid to just kind of branch out a little bit. See if it's right. You can always go back to that point of view that worked for you first. There's nothing wrong with that. And you can always retrench. I had to retrench. I found a better path for myself. Um, I just wish early on I hadn't been so focused on this one path. Someone had told me, it's okay to do things differently. <laughs> no one did. Of course. Well, I have a couple, some of them we already touched on, like focusing on the journey and not the destination. I struggle with this in all aspects of my life um, because I'm a perfectionist and I have no patience. And those <laughs> things are like horrible together. It's like probably like my two worst, no, it's not even in my top 10 worst personality traits, but they're still bad. But uh, it's it's hard to absorb all of that new information that quickly. But I did not, at the beginning, did not want to be on a journey of let's figure it out and let's find a path. I wanted to be at the end result. Yeah. But there is no end result, right? That's what we talked about. So learning to focus on the journey is like a, could be a lifelong struggle for me. Struggle at the beginning and still a struggle now. So <laughs> that's the first one. Um, not trying to force myself to practice every day. We have an upcoming episode on this because we have gotten asked about daily practice, incorporating daily practice, and if we don't, what other sort of routines we have. And that is in two episodes from now. So we'll get into that. But I do not, I did at the beginning try to force daily practice, like doing something magical every single day. And I, it does not work for my lifestyle. So definitely would not even have tried to do that. It was just a waste of time. And this would be easier now for beginner witches now, but I wish I was able to separate Wicca based information early on. Oh yeah. And that was really hard 20 years ago. Or yeah. It was, it was very difficult because mm -hmm. a lot of books from that time period have Wiccan influences without saying that it's Wicca or maybe the author like didn't really know. It was like, when Wicca became popular, witchcraft became more popular and like in the, like the nineties, those things were so intertwined. And we've talked about that before. And we've talked specifically about how Tara mixes those words all the time because yeah. they're so intertwined in her brain because she in is Wiccan. Mm -hmm. So a lot of books from that time period combine those 
information and they don't necessarily say that it's Wicca. So then not that it confused my practice, but like, I don't, I don't do deities. I did uh, like 18 years of Catholic school. I'm not doing deities anymore. (laughs) Like I am done with that. We have next week's episode is all about working with deities. And I know the basics to like share with you, but I am, that is not the path for me. The worshiping anything is not the path for me. And I should say that you don't have to worship deities. It's like a working relationship. It's not like yeah. the same as Catholic worship, but uh, that would come up in books about witchcraft, not necessarily saying that it was like the Wiccan deities. And I would be turned off by that book because I was like, well, I don't want to do deities. like worship these deities. And I thought that was like, it would get really jumbled where it was like, that's, is that all witchcraft? Is that just Wiccan? And they, they didn't really separate it. Now I don't think that would be so much of an I- issue because they are more separate now and more modern books that come out really draw the line between the two. So it's harder to get confused now. But when I was starting out, I wish I had separated that information early on because it would have been a lot easier for me. Uh, I would and... agree with that. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it, a lot of those books are, are tough. I, I can so. point out, like, the first few books I got, I guarantee in the first chapter or even before, it starts with Wicca means witchcraft. Witchcraft is the Wiccan faith. Like, there's some correlation in every first chapter of those early books that I got that say, basically, witchcraft is Wicca, <laughs> witches are Wiccan. That's the way it is. Yeah, oh. and I and I read books like that, too. And I wish I had been able to like separate that information from any useful information mm-hmm. in the book because that was like, it was like a complete 180 for me. I was like, organized religion is the one thing I do not want any part of ever again in my life. <laughs> like, we are done with that. Um, so when they would talk about all these religious aspects, I was like, no, 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 <laughs> this is not what I want. This is not right. And I would just like throw away the whole book, throw mm-hmm. the baby out with the bathwater. So I would, <laughs> I, love I it. think that's, um, you know, problem solved now though books are much better making that distinction now so but for me that's something that I would change uh and my last two first of all was trying advanced magic too quick uh we sort of layered it and we have you know beginner spells and beginner spell work and we've talked all about how you just don't jump into uh hexing jinxing cursing crossing there yeah. are just oh. and even if it's not baneful, there are just like more advanced pieces of magic and Mm -hmm. ritual magic and hallowing a compass is more advanced and like all of those things. And I wanted to do them all right away because I was completely influenced by quality nineties movies. I was going to quality, quality. I have nothing bad to say about the craft. I love it. I thought you were going to go with charm. The original TV show. I love charm. The original (laughs) TV show. (laughs) But yes, all of these, all of these quality like nineties movies and TV shows that I was just like, and, and some of it is the real witchcraft in there. Obviously, we're not making things move with our minds. Like, we, we've talked about that. We're not, you know, setting things on fire telekinetically. But there are some things in there that are real witchcraft and can be incorporated into your practice. But some of it is, like, more advanced. Or just making it into a real spell is more advanced. And I wanted to jump in and do all of that right away. And I just was not ready for it. And then nothing bad happened. Like, I don't, I think... With baneful magic, there can be some, like, negative, like, bounce back and things. We have to be really careful. But if it's not really a negative spell, then it's just not going to work. It's not that anything bad is going to happen. But if you jump into that, like, really advanced stuff right away, then you kind of lose hope that anything's going to work because it's not manifesting. But that's because you're not ready for it. Yeah. And that that was me at the beginning. Not that I, you know, obviously didn't completely give up. But I was like, this doesn't work. <laughs> I was like, okay, like, mm-hmm. I need to, like, let's go back and start at a beginning and not like in the middle so definitely that which is also my last point of things that I would change is to try things again instead of just quitting because that is another one of my toxic traits I have tried like every sport under the sun because if I don't get it in the first five minutes I quit and I do that with absolutely everything (laughs) in my life if I don't understand it within like an hour of working on it I will not pick it up again I it sports or learning something or you know something new online if I can't pick it up right away I I quit it I don't like to keep working at stuff I know it's a terrible habit but that was the case with witchcraft in the beginning too of just like specific spells that it just didn't work either 
because I wasn't ready for it, but also because maybe I wasn't using like the right correspondence for me or the right type of spell. Like maybe, you know, candle magic would have worked better than the charm bag that I was trying to make. So now I'm much better about making notes of that, like in my grimoire. So you can like see the progression and making adjustments there. And I'm much better about that now and seeing like trying things for a second time if I don't feel like they worked or didn't work in the time frame that I wanted them to to just adjust the spell and go back and try it again with like different ingredients or just a different way of doing it, different intentions, something like that um, to perfect it to where I want it to be. Whereas before I would just completely give up right away. I would say that's very true on when you first get started, don't dive into the deep end. Like I got very frustrated with that too. Like I wanted to be able to blow in a candle and start a flame because practical magic doesn't do that. And I should be able to do that. And that's not how witchcraft works. Um, <laughs> so I do want to throw that in because I had that same letdown. And yeah, <laughs> I was very disappointed. <laughs> Practical yeah, I mean, we, we talked about the things that just aren't possible within the realm of witchcraft. So we're not talking, I mean, yes, that don't be disappointed that you, you know, can't telekinetically set your enemies on fire. Like that's not real witchcraft. It's not possible. But even just like more advanced spell work or like complicated ritual magic like there will be a time and place for that as you grow but probably not the place that you want to start because I think you'll just get frustrated I I did I got super frustrated when things like didn't work but it was my own fault that is everything that we have for you for our notes on things that we wish we knew when we started witchcraft and the things that we would do differently if we were starting over now and that makes two long episodes in a row so sorry that was like way longer than we anticipated and there's we will try to rein it in say, next though. week <laughs> there's lots of things to say yeah, we, have, we have so many things to say about this uh the next episode is finding and working with deities which is a bigger topic but i think we can go over it with it not 45 minutes worth of detail so I mean, we will, maybe 42. Uh, you don't mean 42. <laughs> but we will see you next week for that episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. This podcast was made using Anchor, a free platform that has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Now you can even add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless for what you can create. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Need even more witchcraft? Subscribe to our Patreon account for tons of exclusive bonus content and order supplies from our Etsy store. Reach out on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast or by email to witchwednesdays at gmail.com if you have any questions or comments. Find all these links and more at witchwednesdays.com.